What would happen if Izuku led his life differently? Or led his life with two obsessive women through the normal world without quirks and just leading to a place that is beyond of human understanding of love. Welcome to the What If Momo and Kami was obsessed with Izuku. Chapter 1 If you guys would like to see chapter 2 at a later date or tomorrow, please let me know with the like button down below or subscribe or leave a comment because it helps out a lot more than what you think. And also, if you guys can do me a favor, I'm trying to hit 8,000 subscribers for the end of the year to catch up to my old channel that got hacked. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and enjoy. So let's just quickly begin with a little recap or a little future sight of what's going to be happening. Izuku in this world, well, there is no quirks. People might be saying, what about OP Deku or anything like that? Well, you got to stay behind and find out. Well, we're going. The power of logic and yandere women do not touch or where we're about to go. Logic is being thrown out the window at the beginning. Izuku woke up from a dream that he thought he had powers. Well that was laughable. Izuku thought internally. As Izuku got up from his bed and reached for his clock, seeing that it was around 7am and realizing he had to quickly jump up and go near, to, well, to the school bus that was picking him up. As Izuku rushed downstairs as fast as he could, just putting on his school blazer. As the moment Izuku got to the bottom of the stairs, his parents shouted at him, telling his lunch was on the side and ready. As Izuku turned 180 degrees and grabbed it and wished his mom a, a good day. As the moment he left the door, the door slammed with a hurry. As the bus just arrived at Izuku's front porch. As Izuku got into the bus, everyone stared at him like he was an outcast of some kind. As Izuku went to go sit down, but the moment he tried, he was knocked over by a certain leg or even a certain voice he could familiarize. The moment Izuku hit the ground, the guy started laughing. You better watch where you're going, you stupid nerd, the mystery blonde said. Yeah, you should, the other person said, backing up what Bakugo has been saying. Have a nice fall, as they both started laughing, as everyone else on the bus started laughing, except from two people on there, who have been going on the bus since day one, since they saw Izuku hop onto the bus. As the only thing they could do from then was just sit on the bus and wait for Izuku to get off so they can stalk him. But the moment Izuku hit the floor, however, the people who were named were furious at Bakugo and what he did to their precious broccoli cinnamon roll. As Izuku got to school, basically unharmed for today, as Izuku walked inside his classroom, to see his seat was tattered and full of rips and tears, well, markings as we should say, saying die, kill yourself, and so on and so forth, carved into his, well, seat. As the moment Izuku sat down, you could hear most of his classmates chatting and laughing behind his back like he was not there. As Izuku went around his day, but he still felt something off about today of all days, but he didn't know what it was. And Izuku's classes went on as normal until P.E. came around. P.E. was always the one thing Izuku hated because he was always the one left out of every conversation. 
as two people, one with brown hair and one with blue hair, came over to Izuku and asked him if it was okay because they were separated throughout the day because of classes. Hey Izuku, you alright? The brown haired girl said. Yeah, I'm okay, what's up? Is Bakugo not been bullying you today? Um, sort of and sort of not. He did trip me over on the bus, but other than that, I'm okay. Izuku said, retorting. Just know if you if he starts bullying you properly, we're gonna have to report this to the principal, he just said. Trying to get Izuku to report Bakugo for all the things he has done wrong in Izuku's childhood. Yeah, but that ruined his chances into getting into a better school and try and learn from his mistakes. You know that will never happen, Izuku. Yoriko said, trying to pump Izuku up full of energy. Yeah, I know, but we can live and hope, though. If we can't live and hope, but we can at least think he is going to change. As PE began, as Izuku, Ochako, and Ida stayed on the same team as they would normally do. As Izuku would be the first one out, having not much of a physical stature as what he would do in his canon counterpart. As Izuku, tri well, did all his normal exercises throughout that day in gym. As the moment Izuku was about to leave, he could feel those stares coming at him again as he would look behind him and see nothing once more. What the hell is wrong with me? Why do I feel so paranoid? Maybe it's lack of sleep or something? I don't know. I should really go to bed more earlier. Izuku said, rubbing the back up. Well, rubbing the bags under his eyes. As Izuku went to the changing rooms as he finally got changed, but couldn't find his t-shirt, or let alone his bag. As Izuku looked behind him to see Bakugo has chucked his bag all the way to the roof of the building. As Izuku sighed and shouted at Bakugo. Bakugo, why did you do that? Izuku shouted and retorted. Because you're a stupid nerd and needs to know his place. Just remember if you report me and if I lose my fucking scholarship because of you, I'm gonna fucking kill you, Bakugo said retorting to Izuku. Yeah, but if the police find out, you'll just ruin your chances even more at that point. So what? So what if I lose my chances? That means you won't be get a chance to breathe on this earth, Bakugo said, as he felt something that fell off to him, like a menacing aura, but he shoved it off, thinking it was something odd about it. As the air thinned, he could feel something wanting to kill him, so he tried to ignore it as the best he could. As five minutes passed, Izuku finally got his bag back by asking one of the teachers to grab it and help him out with it. As near to the day ending, Izuku was walking down the corridor until the door was slammed right in front of him as he was knocked to the floor. As a woman with blonde long hair and a rack that could rival even the most mature of women, walked out and went over to Izuku and apologized for knocking him over and tried her best to help him up. As Izuku would say, thank you and no worries about it, Kami, Izuku said as Kami blushed under her posterior, trying her best to hide it, but her prying would be in vain, as her blush would come to the surface slightly, but being hid under her makeup of course, as the other cheerleaders behind her would scream at Kami to leave that damn brat alone, and actually come with them because she's gonna miss something, as Bakugo on cue would turn around and smash Izuku back to the floor the moment Kami left. You think you have a chance with her, Deku? Don't make me laugh. The chances of you two dating is more lower than my fucking scholarship being removed. Just remember that you're nothing but worthless trash. 
as Izuku got back up again and put Sho into the floor, as Ida and Orchako both intervened and pushed Bakugo back. You damn extras! Bakugo shouted. That's enough, Bakugo. Remember, when act like this again, you will be expelled. You remember your fucking promise, you know that, right? You said if you bullied Izuku again, you could expel him on the spot. This is enough to get you expelled, Bakugo, the principal said. <laughs> as Bakugo scoffed and walked away, as without shoulder, with shoulder checking Deku, of course, as Izuku was walking home with Uraka and Ida, as they have both finally arrived at the train station until they both went their separate ways, but unannounced to Izuku, he was being followed once again by strangers he did not know who they were, but he knew he was being followed home, so he tried to run out them and everything like that, but the moment Izuku got home, he locked, locked his door and he got into bed and fell asleep. As through the night, we could hear a window moving and a door cracking open as a black-haired figure and a blonde-haired figure both arrived in the same building at the same time, and managing to both ignore them, Izuku was fast asleep.